Hi guys, Ross here. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all having an amazing day wherever you are in the world. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial slash breakdown of this nighttime landscape I made a few weeks back. I think I used some interesting techniques in this render and I kind of just want to run you guys through it. So we're going to be going over how to make moody lighting, how to make the emissive material, as well as using some cool camera settings such as custom bokeh. So hopefully it will be an interesting video. If you do enjoy it, you know what to do, hit that like button, leave a comment in the comment section down below and subscribe so you don't miss any future content. Okay, enough of me waffling, let's jump straight into the video. So we're in Cinema 4D and I'm just going to quickly run you guys through the setup for the scene just so you can kind of see how I've laid things out and scattered the grass across the scene. So let's jump out of the render view. I'm just going to disable bucket rendering for now. And this is the general kind of setup. So we have this seabed here. And if you've watched my previous tutorials, um, you'll kind of know how I set this up. So essentially it's just a plane with a displacer uh, and a noise running through this, which is essentially just kind of adding some variation to this floor. I've then duplicated this without the displacer, and this is acting as our water. So you can see if I disable that, um, we just now kind of get our seabed without that. Uh, so that's just kind of helping to add some nice reflections in our render. Um, we then have this sky object, which essentially is just a plane in the background with um, a ramp going from top to bottom. So just this grayscale ramp here, uh, which is just giving us a nice backdrop and contrasting with this nice orange light here. Um, and then we have some mega scan assets. So we have this rock, um, some grass, which I've just scattered with some matrixes and a random effector just to kind of add some variation. I then also manually placed one of the uh, grass assets in the foreground, which you can see has given us this nice kind of out of focus area here, which I think just helped to add a little bit more depth to the scene. So I kind of want to deep dive into some more aspects of this render, such as the lighting. Um, so let's kind of run through that. So you can see I've also got this Redshift environment set up. Now I did just drop a video last week on how to create these. So if you want to know more about that in particular, um, I'll put a link somewhere on the screen and you can go check that out. So let's just dis disable that and let's go through these lights one by one. So we're going to start off with this key light in the middle, which is really helping to draw attention to the main subject of the piece, which is this rock here with the two lights on it. And the way we've done that is just with an area light here, which you can see is kind of pointing towards the sphere. And the way I've actually done that is quite a nice setup. Uh, I've used something called a target tag. And essentially with this, you can target your area towards a specific object. In this case, I've dropped in the big sphere into the target parameter, which means wherever I move this area light, it's always going to point towards that sphere. So it's a really quick way to be able to kind of manage your lights um, without having to constantly rotate it. You can just have it pointing towards a particular area. And it doesn't have to be an object. You can actually create a null here. So if I just create one quickly and say I moved it over here, I could then drag this into our target object and now it'll be pointing towards wherever that knoll is. And you could also move this around and kind of animate that target object um, as opposed to moving the light. So again, it's a really, really handy tool to kind of make your workflow a bit more efficient. So I'm going to drop that sphere back into the target object. Um, also it'd probably be useful if I actually tell you how to get that. So if you just right click, go to your animation tags and target and you can just find it that way. Or you can press shift C, type in target, and we want to make sure we're getting the right one. So you want to click the one that says tag animation tags, and that will apply it to your current object. Okay, so this is our current key light, and there's a few settings I played with this. So I dropped the intensity down because when it's at 100, you can see it looks a little bit blown out, um, especially when I've added this bloom effect, which I'll dive into a bit more in a minute. So I tend to always drop my area lights down because they are quite bright by default. So usually just drop the intensity down to 50 and then drop the exposure. But obviously that depends on your scene and the kind of look you're going for. In this case, these settings gave me quite a nice result. And I also reduced the spread down as well um, to 0.5, which is helping to really kind of keep the light just in this center part here. You can see if I increase this to one, it's gonna make the light much softer and diffused and it's not gonna give us that kind of moody lighting that we wanna go for. So I just dropped this down to 0.5 and obviously you could kind of drop this down as low as you want to really pinpoint that light, but I think 0.5 worked quite well in this situation. So the next light is purely just lighting the foreground here. So it's just helping to bring a bit more depth into the image and it's got a really nice fall off here so that we have this kind of darker area right at the front 
and leading our eyes to the main subject in the middle. Um, again, this is kind of a similar technique. We've reduced the spread down, reduced the intensity and the exposure, and this is just helping to give us a really nice fall off. You can see if I bump that spread up, again, it's gonna be much softer and we're gonna lose kind of that moody lighting and that contrast that we've created. I use this in quite a lot of my pieces to really kind of help to focus where my lights are shining and that way you can create this really cool moody lighting. So there's one more light I added and this is right in the foreground. You can see all this is doing is lighting up our grass, which we've put here out of focus. And that was just to help draw a little bit more detail into the foreground. It kind of was getting lost without it. So there's one thing we're missing from this scene and that's just a little bit of fog to help create a bit more depth. So all we're gonna do is enable our redshift environment. And you can see that's just helped to create a little bit of fog in the background, just lighten up some of the shadows and add a little bit more atmosphere to our artwork. Some of these values here I talked more about in the previous video, such as attenuation and phase. So I think that's everything in terms of kind of the lighting. I think I do just want to quickly go over the emissive material. Um, it's quite a nice setup, so let's just dive into that. So all this is is just a sphere, and then I've gone to create redshift material and material. And we're going to use emission for this. So actually, we probably don't even need the diffuse and the reflection, but if I disable the reflection, you're going to see that we kind of lose some of the detail here. And I just wanted to help dial in a little bit more detail, so I just added some reflection in there. And you can see how that's kind of just adding a little bit more detail. But the main power from this material is coming from the emission. So if we go to the overall tab, we have emission weight. And by default, it's going to be zero, which is just going to give us our diffuse material. But if we bump this up to two, for example, you're going to see we now have this really nice kind of bright light and we could actually go even more. We could go up to something like 10 and then, you know, that looks probably a little bit more realistic. But in this case, I wanted to kind of give it quite a surreal feel. So I just toned it down to the point where it gave us a nice glow, but nothing too crazy. But if you actually want to kind of treat it as a light, you probably want to go for something like five um, and then kind of work your way up from there. So we're going to leave that on two, and there's a few things that I used here. So you're going to see that I can't actually dial in a color into the emission. And that's because I've used a ramp. So this ramp is controlling the color, but this is actually being driven by a for now node. Now, if you haven't used this before, let me just output it to the surface. This is actually going to create a black and white map based on the angle you're looking at your object. So in this case, we're just looking at a sphere and we're looking at it front on, so it's gonna give us a really nice fall off from black to white, kind of from the center outwards. Um, this can be really useful for more interesting objects. You can create some really cool masks. So we're taking that mask from the for now, and we're then gonna plug it into this ramp. So I've remapped the colors to this kind of orange to darker orange, and this is then driving the emission color. And the reason I do this as opposed to just using like the default emission color is that we get quite a nice like fall off on the edge here where the light gets darker and it just feels a bit more realistic. So finally, I'm just going to go over some of the redshift post effects I used on this piece. So we can just press this little arrow and press the settings kind of dial there. And you can see I've enabled quite a few of these effects. So let's go through them quickly one by one. And you can see it really does make quite a bit of difference. So let's start with the photographic exposure. This is usually the one I always enable first, and this is just gonna help to kind of lift some of the shadows and also just reduce any parts that are quite blown out. It's almost gonna flatten the image a little bit, um, but this allows us to have a little bit more control when we add some more effects. So all we're doing here is we're actually playing with the f-stop, and this is gonna adjust how much light is let into the camera. If you're familiar with photography, you'll kind of understand how this works. Um, essentially, the lower the number, the more light is let into the sensor of the camera, and the higher you go, the less light is let in. So you can use this to kind of dial the exposure of your overall image. So I'm going to leave that at 6.8, and then by default, it is actually going to desaturate your image slightly. As you can see, if I disable that, you're going to get that orange color back. But I tend to actually leave this enabled just because it can help to tone things back a bit, and it just feels a bit easier on the eyes. So leave that enabled and then we have allowed overexposure. So this at the moment is what is clamping those highlights. So by default, I think it's actually gonna put it to 0 0.1, uh, but I've actually increased this to 0 0.3 just to bring some more of that brightness back into our scene. So let's just set that back to 0 0.3 and then the rest I've left at default. So this is just helping to lift the image ever so slightly. The next thing I did was add this color controls and this is just to boost it even more. 
But to be honest, we could probably do this through the photographic exposure. If I just bump this f-stop down to something like 6.2, that's probably going to give us a similar result to what we had in the color controls. So we can actually leave that disabled for now and that's going to give us the same result. Uh, we then applied a LUT which essentially is kind of like a color correction and Redshift comes with a bunch of them built in so you can kind of scroll through these and see the different results it gives you. Uh, for example if I just flick through some of these you can see you can get all sorts of different results and I always like to play with these just to kind of see uh, what different outcomes I can get can't actually remember which one I had it on. Uh, I think it was something like this. We'll just go with that one for now, it looks good. Um, so usually that'll be like the last thing I apply just to add some nice color correction to the final image. Um, but there is a few more things I added and that is Bloom. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, but if not, essentially it just adds a glow to any of the bright areas of your scene. And you can control what Redshift determines as these bright areas by using this threshold slider. So the higher I go, the more picky it's going to be about which areas it adds the effect to. And the lower I go, kind of the, uh, the easier it's going to be. So it's going to affect the whole image. So I tried to find like a nice middle ground where it's just affecting the really bright areas. So in this case, just affecting our lights. And then you can bump the intensity up. So let me just have a look at the before and after. And you can just see it adds a little bit more of a glow to our image, uh, makes it feel a little bit more dreamy. Streak does a similar thing, but this time instead of giving it a glow, it's going to add those kind of streaks that you would get on like a super reflective material such as glass or metal. Um, you can see if I increase the length of these tails, that's kind of the effect you're going to get. Again, you have the threshold and the intensity to affect which areas are being affected and how intense it's going to be. Um, I'm actually going to reduce that tail back down ever so slightly. And there we go, that's the result we had. Okay, I think that's everything from this scene. So we've gone over how to create the lighting, how I created the sky in the background. We've talked about emissive materials as well as some redshift post effects. So hopefully this video has been helpful. If you did enjoy it, leave a like, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and hit that notification bell so you get updated on when I drop new videos. Thank you to everyone for all the recent support. It really, really does mean a lot. I really appreciate it and it keeps me motivated to keep making these videos. So thanks again for watching and until next time, peace.